This is alcohol ink on foam. Yep. Today we're going to look at using alcohol inks on three-dimensional surfaces and how they work in interesting ways on something as unique as bone. We're also going to use a palette to help control where our inks are going. And we are going to gild with it. This is going to be a fun one. Let's go. Bones are dirty when you find them. They get all kinds of gross stuff. I've seen some really disgusting ones. We must clean this first. <laughs> I use a little bit of bleach in a water solution and let that soak sometimes for an entire day before I give it a little scrub down to where they are nice and white and clean and ready to go. After setting out in the sun, the bone is dry and we're ready to add some color. Yes, I'm going to use a palette today for this bone and load it up with some alcohol ink. First, we're going to wrench off the cap. These things have a tendency to glue themselves together and I find that these pliers are super helpful at getting caps off. It's just because color gets on there. Don't untwist it over top of your surface because little flakes can fall off and that can actually re-wet when you add alcohol and cause a mess. I'm adding 91% isopropyl alcohol to my colors. This is because I want to layer these from light to dark. This is a transparent medium, just like watercolor. I'm also going to use a little sheet of Yupo over to the side so I can test colors before I actually put them on the bone. And I have a little well of just alcohol so I can dilute just like you would with water with watercolor. Now, Get my brush loaded up. Make sure to test it every time before you go to the bone. If you skip this step, the chance of you having a color that you did not intend to put on the bone is pretty high. And taking the color off is not an option. Bone is semi-porous, so it's definitely going to take that color in. Also, it's super fluid, so it's possible you're going to get a drip. Oh, yeah, these get drippy. So be prepared to move fast. Here I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to swipe across the bottom to avoid a drip. And then I'm going to quickly dry my brush off on my paper towel, making it thirsty, and pick up any excess alcohol ink. This is a watercolor trick and you do have to work pretty fast to catch these drips if you have one. Making sure that your brush is not overloaded by testing it on that Yupo first is really helpful to try and avoid these extra blobby drips that can happen on the sides of things. I'm not trying to match the color of each dot. I actually want to use different values to add variety and interest all the way around my piece. And as I'm adding in color, the more alcohol ink or just alcohol is on my brush, the more it will seep into the bone and in some cases feather out. This is a result of how dense your bone is. Some bones are super slick while others are more porous. This particular one happens to be more porous and is going to bleed as a result. I don't necessarily think this is a bad thing. The more layers that I put on, the more interesting it's going to become. And I actually like that it's showing off that it is a bone. It's all of its little imperfections just show its character. It's important to note, just like watercolor with alcohol ink, whether you're working on bone or anything else, that you move from light to dark. Colors that have been diluted with alcohol, Use those first and then work your way down to your full strength colors and your darkest values. After all your color has been applied, now it's time for metallics. You want to save those for last. These actually don't have dye in them. They're pigment based, so you have to shake them up before you squirt them out or onto your surface or paint them on. So give it a good shake and then you're ready to apply. Again, remember, save these for last. They sit on top of color and they cover over things quite well. So if you have a mistake, you can always gild it with gold. Applying the gold is just a little different than color in that I do not want to offload my brush onto Yupo or paper towel before applying it to the surface. I want all of those glittery pigments to go straight on to my bone or whatever I happen to be gilding at the time. A very tiny brush is the best way to go. This way you don't get 
too much and hit that drip situation. I'm just going to outline these little areas and let the shape of this turtle shell shine. If you're applying gold to a larger area, cotton ball is what I would suggest. This is going to work for big areas or even textured spots. This gives such a wonderful, thin, even, and amazingly reflective coverage. If you are holding something and applying your alcohol ink, whether it's gold or a color, keep your hands in the same place. Don't move that finger. I know you want to. Don't do it. Completely cover this area, let it dry, and then come back and hit the spot that you missed. I will say that alcohol ink, the metallics, are better than gold leaf. Yeah, I'm going to say it. They're just as reflective and crazy easy to apply. Alcohol ink definitely gets an A plus on this surface. I love seeing all the fissures, nooks, and crannies and layers of the bone through the colors, really showing off both the substrate and the medium used on it. Once you've got your bone decorated with your ink and whatnot, you want to protect it in some way. And this isn't any different than how you would protect an alcohol ink painting. You want to start with a Kamar varnish. Kamar is perfect for three dimensional objects. And in this case, it's what we're going to use to really seal that stuff and keep it from re-wetting should other alcohol or solvents touch it. I'd super appreciate it if you give that like button a boop and subscribe if you want to see more. I'll catch you next time. Stay creative.